Hello, my friend, I got a question for you. Uh, have you ever created something, done something important, and then someone came along and ruined it? Like, like you mopped the whole house, and all of a sudden the kids and the dogs come home with the muddy feet, or you, you write a beautiful song, and someone sings it at a wedding, but they're atonal and have no rhythm. Or, or maybe um, you paint a beautiful picture, and someone paints right on top of it. Sounds kind of specific, but it actually happened to me. I've loved painting ever since I was a kid. I was an art major in college, and I remember I used to paint this one painting over and over again during arts and crafts time. And I had this kid that sat next to me, and he enjoyed messing up my art. His name was Brett Holbart, Harlow Holbart. And he would like stick his hand in a bunch of muddy paint, and when I wasn't looking, bam, just put a giant handprint right in the center of my painting. It infuriated me. You wanna know why? It's not right to paint on someone else's art. This is the exact exhortation that Paul gives to the Corinthians when they start to lower their moral authority, when they start to make excuses about their behavior. He says, when you actually do bad things to your own body and each other, it's like you're painting on the art of God. Here's what he says in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person for God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. If anyone destroys God's temple, in other words, if you paint on God's art, it gets God's most fierce response. Do you not know? God lives in you. Now you think about this, and, and it works on several angles. Paul is speaking to this highly Greek audience with some really significant Jews in it. You gotta understand, what was the Greek temple like? Well, they didn't do sacrifices in the Greek temple, they did them outside the temple. What they brought to the Greek temple was called a votive offering. It's a free will offering. In other words, you would go into the Greek temple and you'd say, I'm giving this of my own free will because I'm grateful to you, God. The Jewish temple is a little bit different. You did the sacrifices in the temple, in the presence of God, in the Holy of Holies. He's comparing us to the Holy of Holies. If you're Greek, you're listening to this and you're going, man, I'm supposed to freely offer my life to God. And if you're Jewish, you get this sense. I'm in the presence of God always. God is near me always. My friend, what would happen if today you and I took this seriously? And we said, because God loves me, I'm not going to mess up his art. I'm going to freely give my life and say, God, you mold me, you make me, you paint me, whatever the word picture, into what you want. And I am going to take serious the fact that you're near me, in me, that I am in the Holy of Holies, and that together we form the place where God lives.